Hi everyone, it's Hidesh. Now we're going to take a look at the, uh, game 2 of the 34th Osho title match today that took place in 1985. Uh, this game was played between these two permanent rivals, Kunio Yonenaga as black and Makoto Nagahara as white. Now this game is really cool. Uh, it's famous for uh, the kind of very cool endgame. It's almost an uh, endgame problem. Uh, there was a very very interesting position where you uh, you can find a very cool move uh, that should be uh, like an endgame problem on a book. So uh, let's just take a look at that cool position. So uh, these two players, they're static group players, so uh, probably they're going to Yadu double their Gura. So let's see that pawn a 7f, okay, white plate, pawn 8d, silver 6h, 3d, silver 7g. Well, this is an old type of Yagura, so. Uh, it doesn't go like uh, pawn and 6f uh, too early. Okay, so 6b. Okay, pawn and 2f. Yeah, this shows that it's an old type of Yagura. Uh, in the modern Shogi, you don't push this pawn so early. Okay, so 4b, so 4h, gold 3b, gold 7h, 5d, 5f, king to 4 and king to 6 side. They go castle. Uh, gold 5b, pawn to 3f, and 7d. Okay, they try and attack. Uh, here on the third, third and seventh file. Okay, go to 5h, zero 3c, pawn to 6f. Bishop goes back to 3a, goes back to 7i, pawn to 4d, and here pawn to 1f, going for the edge. Uh, interesting. So, uh, go to 4c, go to 6g from the right, and pawn to 8e, preparing for the attack on the king's head. But then pawn to 1e, he even pushed the edge pawn. Now, silver 7c going for the attack from white side. Now, it seems black, uh, sorry, white is not uh, thinking about castling anymore, you know. Uh, because, well, because this pawn is already pushed on the first file, so he doesn't want to edge attack, and uh, he's already thinking about attacking on the, the, this side. So maybe he won't uh, go into castle. Uh, maybe he'll try to attack with this king on here, or maybe 3a, not on 2b. Okay, now knight to 3g. Okay, white now uh, immediately attacks, pawn to 70. Uh, because this silver is a very good position. Pawn takes, bishop takes. Now, if then this silver uh, can go up to here, uh, it will be a very good position for white. So now he played pawn to 6c. Uh, this enables him to attack the bishop, uh, even with this silver if he uh, if he has time to. Okay, now pawn to 40. Interesting uh, move to get a banger pawn. If you you know if you take it, uh, well silver, I don't know, will attack the knight maybe. Yeah, so this might be one option, but uh, he felt uncomfortable to take it with the knight, uh, so. His plan is gold to 7f, attacking the bishop, then bishop goes back to 4b, and then he goes for that file. Pawn to 4f, counterattacking the vanguard pawn. Now white takes, bishop takes, now black is uh, clearly threatening a pawn drop on the next move because uh, the silver is pinned. So he drops a pawn to 7d, now uh, black uh, deliberately managed to make a vanguard pawn on the fourth file uh, from hit side. Now white now immediately goes there at the counter-attacking. Uh, black takes, silver takes, and pawn drop again. Well, the point of that pawn exchange is, yeah, silver wants to go back on the fifth file. Now he's uh, already focusing on this side of the board, uh, not on the right side. Okay, so now uh, the silver is gone, so black goes for the second file, pawn is 2e. But silver 60, yeah, he goes for 6th foul. And the problem for black is this is a king's head, so uh, he felt uncomfortable. So king to 7i. Now pawn to 60. Gold takes 60, but rook to 6b attacking the gold. Gold goes back, but another pawn drop, and gold has to go back again. And so the 60 from the right, now keeping to attack. Okay, now silver 5g. Uh, defending there, but pawn to 70, another banger pawn on the 7th file. Now, king to 8h, castles. Now, seeing this move, now all of a sudden, white pushes the edge pawn to 90. Well, this is interesting. 
but uh, it goes even more interesting. Uh, you won't believe this. It's last up to 9h. It's going for Anagama from this position. Now White it now White got so angry. Uh, <laughs> now he's angry. Uh, he's not gonna let that happen. So Bishop to 3c, aiming for the King diagonal. Okay, King goes castle, but pawn 8f, nice pawn sack, and then he goes for the center. Uh, okay, he calmly moved to zero back to 8h, but pawn takes 5f, zero takes. Now the bishop's diagonal is open, so yeah, so pawn pushes 6f, gold goes back, and then I uh, see this move, pawn drop on ag. Now he can take with a silver. Because uh, this uh, pawn promotion is a discovery check. So he took with the gold, and then Sir goes up to 5d. So uh, as I predicted, the king is still on 4a, right? Now pawn to 2d, black goes for the second foul. Uh, he can make uh, bishop right there, of course. Bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes. Uh, pawn up to 2c, rook goes back to 2h. Now both players have now bishops. Now pawn to 5e. Uh, but here, black ignores it. Yeah, this is cool. Pawn pushed to 4d. Now white took it, but bishop dropped on 7a, uh, securing the rook and gold. Rook goes, uh, rook runs to 4b, but he sacks the bishop. Rook takes and gold drop on 4b. Uh, strong move. Rook, rook goes back, and he now uh, f simply takes the silver. Uh, okay, rook promotes 4i. Okay, now he has to do something about the silver. No, he goes attacking pawn drop and 4c very nice um dangling pawn uh, you see that the, the rook is attacking on this square so the gold cannot move so he uh, just takes the silver and 5f uh, but silver drop okay basically king has to run okay another pawn drop king runs and he takes now uh, the silver okay bishop drop on 4f uh, forking the knight and the gold. Uh, right now, he calmly plays pawn promotion to 5b. A cool move uh, if you take it. Uh, let's say a uh, silver promotion, uh, for example. Yeah, that should be it. Uh, if the king runs, uh, gold goes there. I don't know, that kind of move. So uh, he thought it's not good, so the king ran to 7b. Now gold to 70, running away from the bishop's attack and uh, threatening the king. Okay, Sivert's 8c. Now he's not gonna take it simply. Uh, now promoted pawn sack to 6b, cannot take it, so king runs and then he takes it. Okay, king takes and he finally has to make a bottom pawn, 6i. Okay, now bishop takes a knight on 3g, rook runs to 2e. Uh, pawn to 4e blocking. Now. Zero drop on 8e, and now king is in danger. Okay, now white ignores it and promotes a pawn to uh, 5g. Okay, zero drop on 8d, king runs to 9b, and then, well, yes, yeah, zero takes a 9d, which is a th simple threat mate. Now, uh, of course, black king is not in the threat mate, so he has to uh, protect the hc file. Sorry, hc square, and what he did was uh, bishop drop on 3h, uh, protecting there with um, uh, potentially horse, right? A very good difference. Now, well, this is the position uh, where it is uh, considered to be a endgame quiz. So, uh... Why don't you pause the video here and uh, think for the next move and try to find what Yoninaga played in the next move. Alright, now welcome back. Um, so what you should first do here, uh, you do speed calculation. Now, you can see easily that this gold is attacked. But uh, you start, you, st you just start with uh, thinking about ignoring it because uh, if you take, uh, if the pawn takes the gold, it's not threat made yet. Uh, if he comes here, maybe it's a threat made, so uh, yeah, like this for example. So this is what we call a three initiative summate, right? Three initiative summate. So uh, what you have to do, 
yeah, all you have to do is make a two initiatives made move, uh, which means a move uh, that threatens a threat mate in the next initiative set of moves. Okay? So, how do you do that? Okay, here's the answer. He plays Seaver to 3 April mode, a zero attack. Okay, now this sticks to the rule, right? Because if he takes this, uh, Black can take the gold, which is a threat mate. So, uh, you can see that this silver move is a two initiatives mate. Now, what happens if he takes it? Well, one thing, work promotion to 2C. Now, because if White takes this gold, pawn promotion will become a very um, strong uh, threat mate. Now, Black can even take this gold. Uh, Black can even take this knight, which is a very useful piece of attack here. Uh, I'm going to talk about that later. So, uh, basically, White cannot take this uh, promotion Unbelievable. So what he played is, yeah, he ran. Go to 3C. Now here's another quiz. What is the next move by Yonina? Well, one interesting attack is uh, just taking this knight. Because this is a threat mate, you know. Uh, you know how it is a threat mate? Uh, it goes like this. You sack this silver. Has to take with a knight. Has to take with the knight, and you can drop the knight there, where the silver was, and it's a very cool threat mate. Uh, note that uh, how deliberately you avoid these uh, two powerful bishop diagonals. Uh, so this knight taking move is a threat mate, but well, actually king to eight b is kind of a cool defense. It's uh, pretty hard. Well, uh, maybe a computer can find this kind of very cool move. Rook to 2G, securing these pieces, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, indicing one of these two diagonals to here, and then, see right here, uh, still a threat mate, but, <laughs> oh, not a threat mate, but a very uh, strong two initiatives mate, but not, not so clear. So it, it wasn't t taking the knight. Now, here's the answer. Promoted Silver back to 3B, even offering a sacrifice. All right, now, why did not take this either? Well, so why is that? So let's see. Let's see if what happens if he takes it. Well, then, th this promoted pawn sack. Well, the reason... Okay, this is still attacking the goal, so it's a two initiatives to main move. So let's say he takes it. What happens? Yeah, Rook promotes. Threat mate. He can take the knight later. So uh, he can take it. What happens now if the gold runs the 2B? Okay, well, well I think there's, this is another very cool quiz. How do you think the next move is? Well, here's the cool answer. Pawn drop and 4G. Unbelievable. It's blocking the bishop's diagonal. So he has to take it. So he has to take it either well, with either bishops. Rug to 4G. Attacking the horse. Uh, which makes him able to drop the bishop to here in the next move. Uh, even if this horse recaptures. Also, uh, this is, you know, pinning this horse because attacking the dragon, and he can promote to 3C, 4C, attacking this square. So, interestingly enough, this uh, move, Rook to 4 e is a winning move. Unbelievable. So, these two players both read that move at this position, which made white could not play gold takes 3b. So he played gold to 4d. So finally, rook could promote. 
Okay, now he plays pawn, promoted pawn to 6h. Not a threat mate yet, so black has to make a threat mate. How he is going to do that? One is pawn promotion, as I've said, but then, this time, yeah, he can take the knight. Yeah, because, as I've said, uh, this is a threat mate starting from Sivarsak. Okay, so he played now gold to 8b, but another very cool threat mate, knight drop in 7c. Well, I couldn't think of this kind of move. Uh, how a threat mate? Uh, you see how how this is a threat mate? Uh, it starts from Dragon Sack. Gold takes, and the Siren can promote, because this knight is no longer there. Note that this square is protected, but this square is not, right? So, okay, this is a threat mate. If he takes a knight, now this horse's defense is blocked, so uh, black can either play promoted pawn sack or uh, dragon to 7a attacking the gold, whatever. So uh, what he did was take, take, take him with the gold. Okay, silver takes it, horse takes it, but then gold drop. Okay, threat made again. Uh, gold drop. Now he sacks the dragon. Gold takes and he takes that horse. Which is again a threat mate. Uh, you know, don't forget that black can drop a knight or drop the bishop. So he played rook drop, but uh, bishop drop in 6c, which is a brink mate. So he, uh, seeing this move, Nakahara finally resigned. So it was a very, very, very cool move by Yonenaga. Uh, you see the silver uh, promotion sacks, promoted silver sack, uh, both of which white could not take. So, uh, it was kind of a very cool game. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.